KK, thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful that we get to interview you. I would love if you could introduce yourself. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, so yeah, my name is AK Weller. I'm the author of the Anna Bowman Thrillers series. Um, and I live in Montana. I have two dogs and four cats and a husband and a full-time job. And I just write on the side. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Love it. I would love if you could tell us what your books are about. Well, the Anna Bowman thrillers are, as you may have guessed, about Anna Bowman, the main character. And um, I would say they're kind of conspiracy political thrillers. Um, Anna Bowman is an FBI analyst who kind of gets dragged into some big conspiracies. Uh, the books start out with her um, using an assumed name in Colorado and hiding out from her ex-husband with her dog. And she meets a scary stranger there. And then everything just kind of gets crazy from there. So there's a pretty big twist in the middle of the book. So I won't give any more away. But um, I started writing these books probably 10 years ago. Um, and it's just really gotten out of control. <laughs> Love it. What inspired you to write your books? Uh, I was hiking on my parents' property in Colorado, where the first book is set. And I found this dilapidated old barn looking kind of structure. And it was just, it was so creepy. And I was by myself. I had my parents' German Shepherd with me. And I just started exploring it. And I walked inside and and I thought, what, what if somebody was living here? Like, what if they found me exploring this and just what would happen? And so uh, that scene in the first book, Enemy Closer, is is where it all started. I think that was in 2013. So um, the first version of this book that I wrote was kind of a garbage fire, hot mess, but it was it was at least finished. And then I went back and rewrote it in 2020 when I had nothing better to do, like a lot of people. <laughs> and um, I realized that it was actually kind of a good story. And my husband encouraged me to publish it. And then I met Sonia Dewing of the Women's Thriller Writers Association, and she helped me publish it. And I guess the rest is history. Love that. When you were writing your books, who were you thinking of when it comes to who your books are for? Oh, that's a great question. Um, for the longest time, probably dating back to when I was in middle school and I was writing like fan fiction, it was for me. It was just for me. I never intended anyone else to read it. It was kind of kind of like therapy, like journaling. Um, I, I didn't think anyone would ever read it until three, two or three years ago. So now I just, when I'm writing, I just try to kind of hold on to that feeling and keep writing for myself, even though I know other people might read it. <laughs> Love it. How long have you been writing and what made you really sit down and start? Um, I think I started in middle school with a couple of my friends and we were into um, some book series and, and anime and stuff. And we just started writing fan fiction for each other just to entertain ourselves. And when I tell you it was bad, it was, I go back and try to read it sometimes and I, it like makes me weep. It was so bad, but I guess I'll call that the start. I didn't start writing well until maybe like 2017, 2018. Amazing. What is your schedule like when you are writing a book? Um, there's definitely no schedule. Um, I I intend to plan a little better and start trying to write regularly, but right now it's just strike while the iron is hot. Um, I think I went probably a good three or four months without writing at all uh, and then got restarted again. I guess it was in September when I did a short story a thon. Um, so it's definitely feast or famine, and I try to write as much as I can when I'm like feeling that inspiration. Love that. What do you need in your writing space to help you stay focused? Um, I definitely need a clean desk and snacks <laughs> and something to write on. 
Um, I do pretty much everything in Microsoft Word, but every now and then I just need a separate, like physically separate space to write my thoughts down. So I have, you know, a binder, a favorite pen, and it helps to, you know, have a warm kitty cat in my lap helping me out. That's pretty much it. Love that. What is your favorite writing snack and drink? Oh, (laughs) that's a good question. Well, alcoholic beverages usually help to a point. I do like to drink wine when I'm writing, but that's a double-edged sword, right? Like you get a couple glasses in and then you just can't really (laughs) write coherently anymore. So um, if it's not wine, it's coffee. and Snack wise, literally anything like like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, just whatever's in front of me. Love it. What type of books do you personally enjoy reading? Um, I'm kind of a comfort food reader, so I I don't read new things as often as I should. If I get the urge to read, I'll pick up Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings or um, I like Elizabeth George Mysteries and uh, the Kathy Reich's Bone series. And what was the other thing I was reading the other day? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't remember, but definitely no, no deep cuts for me. It's all pretty, pretty standard stuff. Love that. Are there any books or authors that inspired you to become a writer? Um. Brian Jakes wrote the Redwall series. Have you ever heard of those books? Um, So he's a British author and he wrote this series. I guess they're children's books. I started reading them in middle school. And the main character is like a mouse, like a magical mouse who talks. And they live in this abbey called Redwall. And like, it's (laughs) the more I think about it, the dorkier I realize it is. But At the same time, like those books made me love reading, like genuinely love reading. They're some of the only books that I've read like multiple times. I still have them. I have the whole series on my bookshelf. And he was he was a truly talented writer. I actually don't know if he's still living, but yeah, I think he gets all the credit or the blame, depending on how you want to look at it. Love that. What books did you grow up reading? Did you have an all time favorite? Hmm. It's hard to pick a favorite. I do love the Harry Potter books, like like everyone my age. I love uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. I read those first time as a kid, and then again as an adult. Um, and the Lord of the Rings as well. Those books just kind of, I just have an emotional connection to those stories, and so rereading them is kind of like taking a step into the past and reminding myself why I love to read and why I love to write. And um, more recently, I would say, and I just cannot remember that series that I started reading recently. I guess it wasn't that impactful. So delete, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> love it. On the other side of that, now as an adult, what are your favorite series or authors that if they come out with something, you automatically grab it? Yeah, I wish I had a series like that. I've I've been meeting to start reading uh, Kirsten Modglins. I think that's how you say her name. Her books. Um, that doesn't count though because I haven't started yet. Let me think. Well, like I said, I don't read enough, and when I do read, it's usually my own stuff to try to edit it. So. Um, I do enjoy ugh, Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire, the, like the books, um, but I've kind of given up on ever reading the end of that story, like most fans. So um, I think if I, I were in the mood to pick up a fiction book and read it right now, I would probably grab an Elizabeth George mystery from my bookshelf. Love it. What would you tell someone just starting out with reading again? Um, I would say it's okay to just read two or three pages 
and and close the book, put your bookmark in and pick up again the next day. And if you need to go back and read those same two or three pages, that's fine. Um, sometimes it can be really intimidating when other readers talk about just devouring books. Like my mom probably reads two or three books a week and you don't have to hold yourself to that standard. Just find something you like and sit down and, and go there for a minute. Um, yeah. Love it. On the other side of that, what would you tell someone just starting to write their own book? I guess I would say it's okay if it's awful, but at the same time, if you think it's awful, yeah, you're probably you're probably a little biased. Like we're our own worst critics. And you can't expect yourself to write this brand new story that no one's ever heard of before that's just going to turn into a blockbuster and change the world. Like everyone is writing the same stories in their own ways. And that's all you need to do. If it makes you happy and you like it, then it's good. Love that so much. What's one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? Um, for the longest time, people seem pretty surprised that I am not a man because of my pen name. Um, but then I started putting actual photos of myself on my social media profile, and I guess the cat's kind of out of the bag now. Um, other than that, it's pretty much all in my books. Like that, my whole personality is just blah, right there on those pages. So I don't have a lot of secrets. Love it. Is there anything you would like to say or add? I think I think the world would be a better place if everyone at least tried to write. I know that everyone has it in them. People people do write all the time. They write tweets, they write emails. And it's just such a great way to gather your thoughts together and examine them kind of from a detached perspective. And it really is therapy. And I just don't think it can possibly go wrong. Like the worst that could happen is you delete it and no one ever sees it. But but it's good for you. And I think everyone should do it. Love that so much. Where is the best place for readers to find your books? I know some readers love signed copies. Is that an option and the best place to connect with you? Oh, thanks for asking. Um, so right now, all of my books are on Amazon. I do, uh, I have some paperbacks, my two novels, Enemy Closer and the sequel House on Fire are available in paperback, but I don't have signed copies yet. I'm still working up to, I'd say that level of, <laughs> I was going to say fame, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, I do have one copy of Enemy Closer in my local bookstore. <laughs> so if any fans of mine are in Helena, Montana, they can they can go pick it up. Love it. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful that we got to interview you. We'll be sure to drop some links in the show notes. That way everyone can find you. And again, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.